It gives me more joy to welcome you to this week's episode of Authentic Walk with God. This is your brother and friend, Peter Nlemade Ndong Wachuku. Today we want to talk about this topic, God and God alone. Please go with me to the Bible and I will read from Psalm Division 86 verses 1 through 7. I read, Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God, save your servant who trusts you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all the day long. Bring joy to your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of trouble, I will call to you, for you alone will answer me. If I was seeing you now and asked you to raise up your right hand, if you have not at any moment of desperation visited a juju house or consulted a diviner, a witch doctor, a juju priest, an occult man or woman, will you raise up your hand? One of my people's sayings in moments of desperation goes like this. I will not, I will not, is he or she who has not been visited by a difficult or naughty problem. Do you agree with this saying, which is also an assumption? If you do not agree with it, why? Difficult situations come to us from time to time, and they come in various types and shapes. When they come, Some people look up to God for solutions, while other people, including some who go to church, look elsewhere. At best, this second group of people pray to God for solution without believing in his ability to proffer solutions to their problems. They seek help from God and at the same time seek help from occultists saying to themselves, if A does not go, B will go. To which of these two groups do you belong? The Bible is very clear on this situation. You cannot mock God by comparing him with occultists. You cannot behave in a manner that gives outsiders or even people who are close to you the impression that God's ability to come to your aid any time, and especially when it, difficult problems come to you, is limited. Certainly, God is sufficient at all times to rescue his own from any kind of problem. But the question is this. Do you believe in God's exclusive ability to help you? Yes, we are. All attend church gatherings on Sundays and on weekdays, reading the Bible, listening to sermons and singing praise songs in our worship of God. But how many of us are genuine in our expressions of worship to God? How many strongly believe that come rain, come shine, God will stand with them and lead them out of any chaotic situation? They may experience any time or anywhere. When we gather for worship in any setting, God sees, He evaluates, and understands our individual frames of mind. He does not necessarily judge the genuineness of our worship by how loud or how soft we sing or how, unquote and unquote, well, or how, quote-unquote, bad we pray. 
in terms of choice of words and phrases. He does not judge us by our facial expressions or our pious behavior. He judges our hearts. What he finds in our hearts will determine how he will respond to our worship of him. God is not man that he looks for praise and accolades. God is not man that he arranges programs and occasions for personal glorification and affirmation by others. God is God. Whether or not you praise him, he will remain God eternally. His attributes of love and care are constant. To tap into these two attributes of God, you must genuinely draw close to him and believe in him. In the passage of scripture which I read at the beginning, David expresses confidence in this sovereign God during his hour of need. David looks around but sees no other help but God. He sees no help in his position as king in, in Israel. He sees no help in his acquired wealth. He sees no help in his implement of war. He then turns to God and says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In other words, David is saying, God, please, I am calling upon you because I know who you are. I know that at any time, especially in my moments of trouble and difficulty, you will answer me. Yes, God and God alone. What about you? Are you in this bandwagon of faith or are you outside of it? Do you believe that God is sufficient for you and that he will never disappoint you in your moments of trouble and difficulty? Do you believe that God truly answers prayers of his children? If your answer to these questions is yes, stick out to him your empty cup whenever and wherever you are now. He will certainly fill it to the brim with his multiple blessings and needed solutions to your problems and difficulties. In closing, permit me to mention three solid reasons why you must rely on God alone. One, God is supreme. No one is above him. All beings, be they spiritual or physical, fall below him. Two, God is most powerful. There is no mountain of your life experience he cannot level, and there is no valley he cannot fill. Three, God is love. God has no place in his heart for hate or animosity. He even loved us while we were sinners. Please bring to him now your burdens and stop running from pillar to post for solutions. God and God alone will liberate you and give you succor and joy. Until next week, when we meet again on this platform, this is your brother and friend Peter Lemaden Dong Wanchuku, Director of Center for Family Life and Pastoral Care of Warren, Nigeria, saying, God bless you, live good.